Hey guys, this is Sean with bleepandjeep.com and this is not a mud tire. If you're like most off-roaders, chances are you have a CB radio somewhere in your cab. Uh, you may not use it on the road, uh, you probably strictly use it off-road, on the trail, when you have a bunch of buddies all in a line and you need to talk to them immediately without having to rely on a cell phone signal. Well, this video today is going to show you how to tune your CB antenna. A lot of people don't realize you actually have to tune the antenna for it to perform correctly and not damage your radio. An untuned antenna will damage your radio. It will mess up the finals and it won't transmit. You have to tune your antenna. Ideally you want about 40 meters all around your antenna, clear of any obstructions, hills, towers, anything metal. For reference, this is how I have my antenna mounted to my toolbox and it's a 102 inch whip antenna it just keeps going up these rings at the base of the antenna the lock washer and the regular washer are how you increase the length or decrease the length of the antenna to add or remove a leaf you literally just unscrew it at the base and add or remove your tuning rings depending on how many you need. Mine is already tuned, so I'm not gonna adjust mine at all. You'll also notice I have a four inch spring on mine to take the impact of a tree or whatever might hit my antenna. This is not at all required. Uh, it actually adds a significant amount to the length of your antenna, uh, which could be good or could be bad, depending on how you're tuning it. If you have a fiberglass antenna, or a very long one like mine, a 102 inch, I definitely recommend having a spring. Because fiberglass, when it whacks something, it's going to shatter it. And this is so long that it actually, under very low overpasses, will hit the bridge. So, it's good to have that. Alright, you'll want to hook up your SWR meter. I don't recommend using the ones built into the radios, they're more of a reference. I would um, buy one from Radio Shack, or... Uh, gas station they're 20 or 30 dollars you plug it into the back of the radio and the other side into the antenna they're much more accurate but because my antenna is tuned I'm just going to use this it all behaves the exact same way it's just there's a lot more buttons and gauges on this so now you want to turn on your radio give it enough volume so you can hear any chatter might be going on um, and then you want to go to channel 1 That'll be your starting point. Take your SWR meter and switch it to calibrate. And what you want to do is in channel one, take the mic and key it. You see how it pegs out? Then you want to take your SWR calibrator knob and bring it down to where it says cal or calibrate on the SWR meter and then stop keying the mic. Then what you'll do, switch it to SWR and you can get an accurate reading in channel one. And you can see mine is pulling about 1.2, 1.3 SWR. That's a very good reading. I'm almost transmitting all of my power. So now what you want to do is change the channel to 40. Put the SWR meter back in calibrate and key the mic. It'll peg it. Use the calibration knob to bring it back to where the SWR meter says calibrate. Unkey it, switch it to SWR, and key your mic. I'm also pulling about 1.3 in channel 40. So I've got a very good SWR reading throughout the entire spectrum of channels. Now the channel I primarily use is channel 19. We'll see how that reads. Now push it to calibrate, key the mic. SWR and I'm pulling 1.1 SWR reading. I could not tune this antenna any better than I already have. To get this kind of reading you'd have to be in the ideal environment. Remember to close the doors on your vehicle, close all your windows, make sure none of your buddies are outside messing with your, your Jeep. Have no buildings, no metal antennas, nothing around you. Just no mountains, nothing, just completely clear. 
And this is about the only environment where you're going to get an SWR as good as this. An SWR of 1 is ideal. An SWR of 1.5 is about what you're going to get in most situations. SWR of 2 will pose problems. You'll have transmit problems and receive problems. Anything at 3 or higher will damage your radio. Now remember, if you're getting a higher SWR reading in channel 40 than you are in channel 1, your antenna is too long and you need to shorten it. And if it's too high in channel 1 versus 40, you need to lengthen the antenna. Very minor increments when tuning the antenna. One of these washers will be more than enough to make a significant difference in how your radio performs. I think the difference between channel 1 and channel 40 on the scale of the wavelength is like three and a quarter inches. That's the actual radio wave transmitting from the antenna. So very small increments will be more than enough to get the tuning that you need. Make sure when you mount your radio that the coax cable, the one coming from the antenna to the radio, isn't coiled around. Make sure you get the correct length and um, coax cable and keep it as straight as possible all the way to the radio. I mean it can go around corners and things like that but the shorter the cable length is the better the performance of the radio will be. Alright guys this was more of a down and dirty quick way to tune your antenna. It's effective, it works. Um, I didn't really get too into the setup I had, the radio, the antenna, brands, anything like that I had. Um, honestly, it doesn't really matter. They all behave pretty much the same way. But if you did learn something today, uh, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button. Obviously, subscribe to Bleep and Jeep. Go to bleepandjeep.com. Thanks for watching. Always appreciate it.